I never got to hold my daughter. She was never in this world for me to hold. Joshua Lonis lost his unborn child and found himself grieving years after her death. My wife and I got pregnant. She was pregnant in our mid-30s, and after um, halfway in the pregnancy, we found out that our daughter had a genetic disorder where life was going to be impossible for her. So we lost the child, and it was a really heavy grieving process for me, and I didn't really know how to get out of it. Four years after her death, Joshua was still searching for a way to cope with his unexpected loss. I just wanted something. I wanted her to be with me. I wanted to have something physical that was beautiful that I could look at. He decided it was time to honor her with a tattoo, but not just any tattoo, a cremation tattoo, which involves mixing the cremated remains of a loved one with ink and then injecting them into the skin. While mixing ash and ink may not sit well with everyone, more and more artists are finding an audience and a passion for this more personal style of tattooing. They want to be more connected with their loved one, or a lot of the times now I work with pet portraits. Um, so people will actually have their pets cremated and tattooed into their tattoo. And it's just so that way they get to keep them for forever. I'm getting a memorial tattoo of my dog that just passed away on Halloween from the labrella injection that he received. And so she's going to do a little tattoo of his paw print with his favorite ball with his ashes in my tattoo. I figure he's always with me that way. He's been a part of my life for almost 10 years and he's a really good dog. So I'm going to have him right here on my arm and it's going to be with you right by your heart forever. Not all tattoo artists are on board with mixing these for body art. Nowadays, tattooing is more professional, so we tend to uh, have higher standards as far as, you know, what we're applying. Edward Kehoe, the owner of both the Monolith Tattoo Studio and Academy, says they do not teach cremation tattoos of any kind to any of his students at his academy. I understand people's, like, ideas of wanting to get the memorial with the ashes. I mean, it's a very sweet idea but I just don't think that it's uh, sanitary per se. Uh, you wouldn't go to a doctor and be like, hey, while you're stitching me up, can you drop my dad's ashes in my gut? Megan doesn't see it that way. Her eight years of experience has taught her that it should be the client who chooses the art and the art form. So they are asking for it. Sure, if it's safe to do, then I'm going to do it. Um, you know, whatever, type of art they want, I can usually either replicate or help do that. And Megan isn't discouraged by the naysayers. In fact, she says the contents of the ink going into clients like Joshua isn't really anything new. Ashes and soot and minerals were always used in tattoo ink, so we've been doing that for hundreds of thousands of years. Why is it any different for me to use the remains of someone else to put into that ink? You can't get much more sanitary than burnt. There's nothing left there other than the ash. And so I don't have a worry about the sanitation side of things. Out of the 20 or more tattoos I've done, there's never been an infection problem. So I gave Meg the basic idea. I really wanted the ribs. I love anatomy. Um, I really wanted it to represent the women in my life that have been with me. Joshua feels comfortable and safe getting his cremation tattoo. But even more important to him are the feelings he'll carry now that his grief has an outlet. I don't know, some people find peace and get over grief in weird ways. Mine was a tattoo. It's just felt closure since then, and it's been a really beautiful thing. Steel Haugen, Central Oregon Daily News.